All right, Chelsea fans, we are back. I nailed the prediction for the score. I had a pretty good line of predictions. We're going to cover it all at the uh, RB Salzburg match review. All right, so kicking it off, Chelsea won 2-1 to one away against RB Salzburg. Uh, and thanks to Milan beating Dinamo Zagreb, Chelsea are guaranteed to be top of the group thanks to our head-to-head -head tiebreakers with AC Milan. Uh, it's something that you want to get excited about, quite obviously. So let us relive it a little bit, kicking it off with the Chelsea FC website, giving us some stats here. Obviously, the final score, 2-1. We are the way team. Uh, we had 15 shots, 11 on target. That has to be the best of this season. Like, the fact that we were well over two-thirds, almost at 75% of our shots were on target is insane. Another amazing display from an opponent, opposition goalkeeper. Uh, and credit to them that it could have been a lot more, should have been a lot more, especially think about the Aubameyang breakaway in the first half. Uh, and, and many other people that had good chances to score and didn't. We had 70.5% possession away on the road to a good RB Salzburg team. Uh, 13 tackles and committed 11 fouls. Now, a little concerning maybe is the fact that they got 16 shots off, uh, albeit seven on target, you know, just under 50%, which is a good day out. Anything over, you know, 40, 50% is good for shots to shots on target, um, especially when they only had like sub 30% possession. Uh, they were definitely able to create some chances. Their goal was a good goal. Uh, hit us on the break. A great ball in from the left. And found Adam Adamu Adamu in the middle uh, behind Kukurea, which was a little bit of a bummer. Uh, Abamyang with six shots led the team. Uh, Kukurea had the most touches. I think he had a good bounce back game. Uh, and then Thiago Silva with the most passes. I mean, he is a quarterback uh, of this team, realistically, especially with the new kind of setup under Graham Potter. Raheem, the dream, Sterling created the most chances with four. Kukurea had the most tackles with three. And Jorginho had the highest passing completion. But again, how many risky passes did he play? Don't really know. Uh, the team sheet was weird, I think, as we saw, right? Uh, it was definitely one of those ones we we're trying to figure out. As we can see here, Pulisic ended up playing right wing back, although he abandoned his duties at times because his natural instinct is to go forward. Raheem Sterling has a left wing back in front of Kukurea. So um, it was it was all a bit weird. But I did predict Pulisic and Havertz coming in. I just didn't think it would have been Pulisic at wing back. But that just goes to show you, we have injuries in key positions where we don't have depth. Uh, Potter is putting in players that normally wouldn't play those positions, maybe playing a formation he wouldn't normally play to make it work. And again, the fact that we made these changes, that we changed the lineup, that we had players playing out of position, still got a really strong result, is exactly what you want to see. And I think if you look at this, again, Pulisic getting <laughs> up in attack, right? Spending a lot of time in the opponent's half, just shows you what kind of a player is uh, to get an assist uh, is actually what I predicted. So I did the Chelsea FC and USA spaces yesterday. And this is what I said. If Pulisic is going to be pushed back to a wing back, the best thing he can do today, yesterday, is to get an assist. And that's what he did. He went out, got an assist, contributed to the team, uh, albeit not in his his natural position. And I think that was really good to see from him. I mean, he's done, you know, not much wrong in the last few matches. So we'll have to see when his time for a start is as we look to Arsenal at, or I'm sorry, Brighton at the weekend uh, before taking Dinamo Zagreb on midweek, which is a dead rubber, nothing going on in that one. And then we play league leaders, Arsenal, at least as it stands uh, the following weekend. So again, serious minutes to be had. Um, Jorginho, they, you know, put a lot out about him and how, how well he did today. Uh, if you look at the average positions, you can see we really stacked the left side of the attack with Kai, uh, with Kovacic, uh, with Raheem, and then, uh, Aubameyang up top. And then over on the right side, uh, you've got Trevo sitting next to, I believe that's Connor 23 and then 10 being Pulisic. So, uh, a very interesting kind of shape that we ended up seeing from the team, uh, but did enough to get the job done. And again, huge shout out to Kai Havertz for what an amazing goal he had, not to take away from Kovacic's first time shot either. Um, but as you can see, the XG was pretty much even. 
uh, these shot maps are pretty pretty similar. The the funny thing is with Chelsea, our two goals uh, came from outside of the box, not our big chances in and around the six, which is a bit funny. Their goal came from about the penalty spot, which makes a lot of sense. It was their best chance they converted. Uh, we converted probably some of our least uh, effective chances, which is kind of funny. So, uh, anyways, lastly, Kai Havertz, he was completely involved all over the field. Really, really good to see a bounce back performance from him. Uh, we talked a lot more about this in the, uh, match review podcast that is out today. So go check it out. If you want the full hour long match recap, uh, we talk about that in depth. And then just a moment to praise uh, Connor here. Uh, he stepped in, uh, played a critical role for this team, really box to box, high energy, tons of tackles. And it's always good to hear from the guys that came through the academy and uh, what they have to say after these big, big matches. So he says, quote, that was a great night for us. We're really happy to get through uh, when he's talking to uh, the Chelsea media team. He goes on to say it was a tough game. Uh, as we knew it would be, but everyone stuck to their tasks. We gave our all and we got three points at a place like this is massive for us. We're just so happy to qualify. And the team knew that going into this, there's huge amounts of, of pressure that are going on uh, in this one, because if you win the Dinamo Zagreb match, it means nothing. We knew we were going to advance it just depending on the Milan result. If we're going to be guaranteed the top spot or not well they did the business we are guaranteed to be the top spot which means we're in the the top seat or pot one or i believe it's pot one going into the next round which means we get a home leg the second match right so you, the idea is that you get an advantage of playing at home in the second leg is is the thinking there so uh, as you guys as you guys can see it's shaped up here chelsea on 10 points milan on seven but we have the head-to-head -head tiebreakers which means we will go through even if they beat salzburg uh at the end of the group stages where it gets a little bit tricky though you know milan still have to beat salzburg essentially it's whoever wins that match um you know moves on milan can draw but salzburg is going to be going out there to absolutely win and with us like dinamo they could win but i, I still think milan take them on head-to-head -head tiebreaker having just bet beaten them so dinamo has zagreb has nothing to play for chelsea has nothing to play for all eyes will be on the milan salzburg match for the final match day but this is the position you want to be in and if you think back to the beginning where we lost to zagreb we tied salzburg it was not looking good to then go two for two against milan and now beat salzburg essentially three wins in a row look how quickly that turned the group around for chelsea uh so big effort from potter and the team and and it pays off and that's exactly what you want to see uh the last thing i do want to touch on is that chelsea announced that lawrence stewart is to join chelsea he'll be joining chelsea in a new position as technical director to focus on football globally so if you didn't know we did a full podcast with matt law talking about what is kind of the structure with a technical director a sporting director and kind of all these scouting people that are being assembled uh with todd bully and team um what it essentially means is he's going to come in as a technical director, which he's doing at AS Monaco right now. Um, and he'll be here whenever he completes his commitments to them. <laughs> right. So a little loose, but that's OK. Um, he was the head of global scouting at RB Soccer International, which we know Bully loves dipping his toe in these waters. Uh, Matt Law saying that Christophe Avell is still expected to join. This does not change anything. Um Stewart's quote, which, you know, you bit PR, but it's good to hear where he's thinking, he says, I'm delighted to be joining Chelsea and excited about the vision and direction of the club under the new ownership group. I'm excited to join them and help them build a world class global sporting organization to consistently win on the pitch at the highest levels and provide every or provide player pathways to help develop our talent. Um you know, the owners wanted to say Lawrence is an important appointment as we plan to build a deep sporting team that will collaborate closely. This is the big thing, collaboration. Bully wants collaboration. He feels like the women's team is over here, the men's team is over there, then the academy is over here, and they need to be essentially brought together. We've been to Cobham. Cobham is a massive facility. The women are in the back, the senior team are kind of in the middle, the youth team are at the front. It is sprawling to get, and then to have like each you know, staff has their own building. I don't really know how they're going to centralize it there because essentially everything is set up to be separate. But this is a huge thing that Bully and Egbad, Egbali want to see. Uh, they said Lawrence is a world-class football leader who understands talent management, data, and scouting, player development, and performances. So 
I mean, the pieces continue to fall. Uh, that is something that uh, I think we're going to see uh, more announcements in the near future. Again, when is the timing of Vivelle? Not 100% sure. Um, but it, it's, it's just one of like a few big pieces that are starting to align. So as, as you can see here, uh, Matt Law bringing in the tweet saying, don't expect this to change anything on the anticipated arrival of Christoph, Christopher Vivelle. Uh, the club global distinction being the key would expect more confirmations and further clarity on appointments and titles in the near future, which is good to see. Um, and then also noting that uh, he put an article out this week saying uh, that Chelsea are going to raid Brighton again, this time for Paul Win Stanley, who is set to join Vivelle Shields and Stewart on new recruitment team, as hinted by the Secret Scouts. So as you all can see, Chelsea are making moves, doing the business. Uh, domestic success is not enough. They want global success. Boli and, and Igbali are trying to build a global empire through Chelsea Football Club. And so if you're a fan, you can't possibly be anything other than excited. The ambition and uh, the structure in which they are going about this is mint. It is just peak. You love to see it. Um, double that down with the, the news, with the fact that we had a great result on the road in Europe. It's a great time right now. Chelsea fans are riding the wave. It's brightening at the weekend. We'll be back with more content. Uh, I'm out for the day. I'm going to be traveling, though, this week, so the videos might take a little bit of a hit. Might not be every single day like we've been trying to, um, but I'll see what I can do while I am out uh, in Arizona and Colorado traveling for some weddings. So anyways, hope you've enjoyed it. As always, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out the podcast if you want more content. We have hours of Chelsea content every single week for you over there at the London is Blue podcast feed. Anyways, have a great day. I'm out.